Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about workflow. What I mean by workflow is the way you arrange yourself to make sure that you can be most efficient and successful in using the workbench to create your creations. This is a huge thing in engineering. I do this every day, especially if you're designing something, especially if you have open a modeling software. So I'm very familiar with workflow. Workflow also applies to photographers, videographers, anyone doing anything in a software. It's just how you process or create your data. So Stormworks has a very defined workflow that I'm going to talk to you about and hopefully give you some hints and things that are going to be new to you and that can help you. So follow along. Now this tanker ship took me a record time to program all the microcontrollers in it and make it from a dumb hulk of block, not steel, but blocks, to something that has logic and function and functionality and tons of features. It has all the features of all of my big ships. It has a very similar um, interior here, bridge, and that's not necessarily on purpose, it's just by functionality because I found that this system works so well, I'm trying to just optimize it and make sure that I'm using it. Obviously in a ship that has a bigger bridge, I'll most likely not do it this way, just like the uh, RSV um, Avala that has a multiple um, seating arrangements and stuff. But for this size ship, I found this is a good size bridge. So what's the secret and why was it so fast? Well, let me show you. If we go into the guts of the ship here, you'll see that the microcontrollers are all laid out just like this. So it's kind of one sheet of microcontrollers that rules the whole ship, that controls everything. And these are the same microcontrollers that I put in all of my ships. We got the automatic anchor, we got the engine start, the map, the position hold. So all this stuff is stuff that I've either created myself or borrowed and linked in the description. So I'd say most of the stuff I made, but some of the stuff, especially the Lua, the weather screen and certain things I did not make. But here is the trick and the trick for ships was that my first test was actually with the MV Cochrane, just because it was so crazy, so big, there was so much stuff going on. I was losing my mind how to do it properly. And I'm like, what if I put everything on a sheet? This is what I mean by a sheet. So if you look here, there are the exact same microcontrollers that that ship has. Plus that ship has some additional ones like the crane controller. There's no crane here, but that's easy to add. There's certain things that I put on almost all of my ships and it got so tedious. I, I'm telling you, I was like just not wanting at all to start programming my ship. I'd make a beautiful like hull and body design. And I'm like, I can't do this because this is so tedious. Like, just look at the amount of logic going through this board by itself. Composite 2, display stuff, even some audio, tons of electric. All of this stuff was so tedious, it took time and I knew exactly what I was going to do. So, I made this. This has everything. This has my ballast tank systems. It has the pumps already. It has the engine as an example with the generator module that I've created. It has the breakers. It has a water jet, all the thrusters already pre-programmed. It has the autopilot system already in here. Everything, everything is here, including all these alarms which by themselves were so tedious to set up every single time I had to copy and paste it and whatever. So I've created this. Now this workflow is what I do for ships. So for a ship, I make a body of a ship, a hull, if you will, just like this guy. Now this guy has been sitting in pre-production for so long because I could not bring myself to do any of the programming. The only thing I've programmed was these engines. If you go into the bridge here, which is also the same arrangement, none of this stuff is programmed, none of it. So I just could not bring myself to do it. But now with this trick, this is honestly gonna take me, I would say a couple hours at best. So I create my ship, I got the hull, got the design, got what I'd like, and easy as pie, I will import this 
into my creation, put it somewhere above here, and just start copying and pasting. That is all it is. I'll most likely start by taking the whole sheet of microcontrollers, just because that is sort of the brains of the ship, finding a place to put them, most likely in the bottom of the hull somewhere, like in this region. Now this is the fuel tank, so I gotta be careful. But this ship may not have, nope, it has this area. It has a room, okay, engine control room, but I'm not gonna do anything in this area. So most likely they'll go right here and that's where they're gonna live. And then after I've copied that, I'll start copying the pumps and even the mast setup. Now, if I do wanna keep the same mast arrangement, I can. If I wanna do a custom mast arrangement, I can as well. See, most of the time my research ships only have the one spotlight, but in a case where I wanna have three, I could take this. So there's tons of things to do. A lot of this stuff was just things I've learned over time. Like, oh, this, this uh, even as simple as pumping the fuel, like filling the fuel tank up, but also having the same system also pump out. Now, easy, very easy to just do a parallel tank system or uh, pump system with valves and stuff. But why even bother? Why not just use these predetermined steps? Now here I am actually missing logic, so I have to go and fix that. But that's not that hard. That's really not that hard. And I will fix it. But I've been doing this for my whole, um, for this whole sheet, including the, I've just added now right here, the overboard tether that I created just yesterday. So even that's on here, I keep this sheet updated because this is sort of my Bible for what I install on my ships. Now this system works best for ships, I will say, just because ships have so many different functions. For other things, such as cars or trucks, helicopters or planes, just because they're a little smaller, they don't have as many moving parts, like as many microcontrollers in general, what I do for my workflow is just like this. I'll find a donor body that I wanna sort of use its computers and parts into my new build and I'll start by plucking them one at a time. So, and I'll, I'll as I pluck it, I physically cut it and move it into the new build. This way I make sure not to disturb or I make sure to, not to forget anything. In some instances, like this one, this is the whole controller of the car. Like this is the whole engine start, everything. So depending on how I'm feeling, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I may just copy it. Like it may not be worthwhile to move the whole ignition and seat over and wheels and individual things. So for this one, I'd probably not, but that's where you get to play with it. You really, there's no set way, but because a car or truck or helicopter or smaller plane has only maybe like 10 to maybe 20 microcontrollers, versus the ships that have incredibly huge complex ones like the autopilot. Here they're fairly easy. Like any of this stuff can easily be dragged not, or even just uh, re redone here. And I would just put it in, put it right here and or whatever, connect it to the right, right procedure or, and right step and kind of complete the creation like that. Like I said, a helicopter plane, smaller plane, car, truck, whatever. This is the process I do. First things first though, I'd make sure to have a body. In this case, it's like a van thing. So I'd make sure to have the body, but I do always wanna make sure the engine fits. So that's a key element with a car. Ships have tons of space usually, but with a car, like in this case, I do wanna make sure I have enough room. So I even could have made the hood lower in this case. It could have been down here and I didn't have to make it so high. This whole van could have been dropped a little lower see the seats are elevated but anyway start with the start with that i always make the whole thing white and then at the very end i'll pick a replacing color change it a tad just so it's not the same as one of the preset ones paint the whole thing and then at that point i go and actually paint my body and that way most of the parts underneath or all the parts underneath unless they're pre-painted are going to be black they're going to be easy to just look properly finished and that way i can go and paint only what i need to paint so those are the steps cars trucks planes helicopters and big ships 
No matter what, this is the system I use. I found it so helpful and so useful because honestly, this type of stuff, I loved making the creations. I loved programming it to the, in the beginning, but after a while when this was what I was working with, especially this huge one, like let me tell you, this guy here, wow, it was a pain. All of these thrusters, everything had to go right back to it. So this helped so much. Anyway, hope that helped. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support. Stay tuned for more creations, more videos, more everything. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.